good afternoon everybody so this is uh, you know lighting design and today uh, i'm going to share the presentation on the topic which is a story through light basically so uh, normally what happens is that when we say lighting it is about technicalities it is about luminaries or it is about the application but uh, very few times we try to go uh, you know like for what, what is the purpose of lighting you are doing it so basically and for whom we are doing it so obviously we are doing it for the people for the humans and as people are emotional lighting communicates with them and creates a emotional appeal to them so that is a very important aspect of lighting how does it affect people and this presentation is precisely based on that like whatever the developments we do in the labs in the uh, factories everything but basically it's very important that how people feel when they come in the presence of light so if you see uh, we live in a very constantly changing environment around us and one factor that drives us the people for the next day in enthusiasm is the sense of wonderment and it's basically a characteristic of people they love wonderment they love a sense of puzzlement and they want to explore and that excitement is always there and when you see something it affects you basically not only the external thing but you think deep and you go into your deeper self and you explore the mystic universe which is in ourselves and that is what enriches of life so uh, what we see more important is how we imagine and that is applied to design that is applied to art so now lighting so lighting is what it is about integrating the space the space around us the space we live but more importantly not only the space but now we have to consider the art element inside of the space it's the residence it's a restaurant it's an office the sound there are different sounds ambient sounds sound of people sound of machines videos now videos have become very important aspect of our lives because of the devices we are using in this digital era that may be the mobile screens uh, laptops the tabs your desktops your tv screen so video is everywhere so lighting has to consider that element then there is food because now if you see because of this uh, work from home culture and people a lot of time spending in their uh, homes uh, in the spaces food is a very important aspect in our life cycle and aroma which is a very uh, neglected thing so you know when we think about lighting it is just not about the space it, but it combines the different elements which are part of the space so starting from art sound video food and aroma but now we integrate this with whom with the people a very important aspect of lighting lighting has to connect with the people and it has to have a Uh, response from it so is it important so the what is the next thing it has to create emotions because people are emotions and people react like you see something you perceive it and then you your outcome is basically your mood or emotion and what does it do this has to be a magical experience so when i say that you know when i do a lighting project or a thing people should experience it and that experience is very important if i could create a magical experience nothing like it now we at you know lighting design we look at lighting in the process called as ade so a stands for art d is for design d e is for engineering why is art important because art is basically the essence of creations and emotion is its outcome any art you see from paintings movies drama basically emotion is the outcome how you feel when you come out of that when one looks at a site like i have been given a site it's like a blank canvas for me then i imagine a story and the emotions will be defined in what sort of story i want to take and how i want the journey of the people in this space then comes design now the, once i have a you know plan a creation design is a process of envisioning and planning this creation 
and what is this is the effect what you are going to plan and design thinking approach is very important in this total aspect where user is at the heart of the design and you have to find a very livable solution that is the primary purpose aesthetic is just a part of it normally what we think is that no aesthetic is very important but livable solution is the primary purpose and again what is important is what experience you give to the viewer or to the person who is in the space so now you have art you have design and now you come to engineering now engineering is like a platform it's like a foundation on which your design is based it is application of the scientific principles through science mathematics with respect to the lamps luminary systems and how you use the automated technology which are growing today to develop interactive design now there is always room for a story that can transport people to another place this is why uh, you i always loved this ki i wanted to transport the people to for that moment to some another place because the magical the crux of the magical experience lies into this everything has a story you need to tell like any space anything there is some story you just have to create it and you have to tell it now uh, we will be just going through uh, four art forms so just for right you know this is from the movie citizen scheme now you see there are the three characters here there is one editor one uh, there is the reporter and there is other individual there is something sort of a book in the, the person's hand and you see the light of shaft it is creating characters out of the space out of the people so the person who is with the book you see uh, it, the light falls bang on it so it creates a curiosity you have a mystic character created because is backlit there is this lady which is side lit and basically you know the scene demands that something they wanted to explore basically so the lighting perfectly creates that drama this is a painting by joseph oderi uh now here there is a philosopher a uh, professor his two assistants and the professor has created a oderi oderi is a mechanical model of a solar system so there are his children some other people so you see how lighting encompasses everything first lighting creates characterization on the faces the shadows secondly lighting envelops the the people and leaving everything in dark so you don't know what is the space outside it third you see what lighting basically metaphors is that lighting is knowledge so basically in this model what you are seeing is something to be shared something to be experienced and that is why everybody is looking to it so lighting as a metaphor is always taken as a knowledge thing so this is a, again a beautiful example of how lighting creates an impact in a uh, art form like painting now this is a very uh, beautiful play a disabling number and the legendary mathematician shrinivas ramanuj and his uh, cambridge colleague mr g h hardy now this is about mathematics its solutions and what lighting does it basically first of all it creates two spaces like this maybe some other place something like a winter place this is something a different place so it creates uh, different spaces different time of the duration like this may be early morning this is night secondly lighting creates or focuses on the subject now this are uh, the different uh, equations and solutions they are in process of so lighting creates a very strong uh, focus on it and the character mr hardy is in the center of it basically and here mr ramanuj is in the backlit thing so you know the purpose is basically because mathematics and the scientists basically always thought of something of related to the mind and this so it is a mysterious character so lighting backlit it basically so again again this is how beautifully you create space you create characterization now if you see how lighting that was drama no this is a book 
Now, this is a graphic novel by Chief Mosher. It's about fires, murders in Southern California. Now, Southern California is a lot of overheat, uh, high uh, fires. And here, there is a good amount of contrast created by lighting. If you see the colors, if you see the brightness and the dark shades, you see the desert feel. So, lighting here is very harsh. And uh, the uh, caricature is also very uh, contrasting. So, that drama is all together collected by lighting. All the beauty of life is made of light and shadow. Now, lighting will lose its importance if there is no darkness and there are no shadows which follow the light. So, we have to always consider this very important aspect of lighting that light and darkness play out in a space. So, what is the light story? What we are discussing? So, this is something very new. Most must have heard like. So basically, when I design, this becomes a very important integral part of our design. That is a light story. So to understand light story, it is basically broken down into certain elements. Like if you go to a film, a film is broken down into certain elements. Same way, the lighting design aspect when you create it on a space, it is broken down into some elements of premise. So it has to have a premise create a story structure from the premise, then you create a story structure from the premise, then you create a visual structure to form uh, from that story structure, then you create the visual components from those visual structure and at the end you direct this visual components as for the story structure. So basically what is a premise? Premise is basically the purpose or the theme basically on which your design will evolve. Like if you say uh, again I am giving a movie example so that you get a clear idea. Like if like a lot, many of you must have seen the movie Dangal. Now, the premise of this movie was struggle towards glory in the face of society oppression by the uh, two uh, girl wrestlers, basically. So that the movie was based on this premise. So if your premise is strong, you know you can take your story structure forward. So now you had a premise, then they created a story structure from it from the childhood, their training days, and then to their uh, winning the. You know, main competition, and but if you have a story structure which is written on a paper, a unique require a story structure. So that story structure is about the spaces, about the lighting, about the objects, about the people, and this is created by visual components. That is a short simplification. So you know, you have to follow this pattern to reach to your uh, end end thing. Now we create. Uh, the story in this three forms of lighting. One is static lighting, one is light and sound show, and the third one which we do is light scene interactive. So we'll just cover them fast. So when I say static lighting is basically the lighting which is done and finished basically. So it is going to remain as it is. So now we'll take an example which we did a static lighting for a landscape. So what was the premise? The premise was Basically, I had an idea like I want to create an experience of a road less travel. So, when you say road less travels, there are surprises, there is mysticness, and this element I wanted to get into the design part. So, this is the uh, landscape around the farmers we did based on the premise. So, there is mysticness, there is surprise. It's an enchanting experience basically we try to create. Then the second uh, type of lighting we do is the light and sound shows basically. Now in a now in this project uh, the premise was it was a story of coming together for a cause of survival. So uh, what it meant was that basically this was basically a uh, light and sound show based on characters created on a uh, artificial tree and uh, this was this was based on a jungle theme and uh, you know each animal had its own, has its own story so the basic story was there is a a fire in the jungle 
and this animals which are basically not in good terms with each other how they come together and fight it out and again live a good life so that was the premise of this story so in this light and sound show actually everything was uh, static there there was no movement of the animals so the only we could create that drama was through the dialogues and the light was related to the dialogues basically and the uh, some elements like water the third is what we do is light scene interaction now in light scene interaction we'll see a landscape element which you did a year the premise was the story of a night in a mystical jungle so this was a private residence a big landscape and all the trees were old so you know i had this idea of notion of uh, you know trying to create an immersive experience in the old landscape and you know create something sort of magic now what is interactive 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 is basically when you create scenes so it is basically automated scenes or you create on a remote basically so as per the need of the place you switch on and that scene will come in basically so if you see like this is one scene this shifts to another scene third one now light interactive we did on the facade now here the premise was the story of heating of a malleable metal to gain a new shape now this was a forging company big forging company and you see in forging company what happens you have to melt the metal to gain different shape and when you are melting a metal uh, you know it starts basically from warm color and as the melting uh, point increases it goes to cooler uh, temperature like uh, blue basically so blue is the most hottest basically so because see, again our lighting had to have some point of that corporate and which had to be embedded on their facade so this was a facade and we made it interactive so and this was basically an automation thing this was not on remote so every uh, 5 minutes the lighting would interact with each other so what happens is that the scale and the depth of the space changes when this interaction happens so there is always something new somebody seeing secondly the beauty of lighting is if you see you can actually go inside the space you can hollow the space like you can fill the space you can hollow the space so stories are loved by all everywhere anytime and that is what we try to do through lighting because for us it is just not about lighting design there has to be something more than that and that is what we want to connect people with their emotional communication now as you said in this elements like we saw the premise what is the story structure a story structure is about a theme being laid in the design and this will be inspired by the space where you're working the different design elements of the space the people and yes your imagination so all this put together creates a story such like what i want the space to look like you know so once that is freezed then i can move ahead to the visual structure so this is very important also i should be able to freeze the story structure so this was a resort cum water park uh, this we do so there's a different landscape elements man made elements natural elements and we created a story structure it's like a storyboard we created it part by part and we got down to the details like what will happen in the first frame second frame third frame like this is for us one frame what will happen here what will happen what will happen here. so this is how we create a story structure and based on this you know the and thing came about basically so your story structure is very important now after the story structure which is on paper or on your 
laptop, something. You have to create a visual structure which will be actually implemented on the site. So visual structure is very important. So what is a visual structure? What you see is obviously a visual structure, but it is made of different things, solid, liquid, landscape, hardscape, man-made, natural, water, colors, lot of things play an important role in visual structure. People moving around. So before going to other things, what is visual structure made up of? We need to understand it's made up of visual frame. Now, what is a visual frame made up of? This is a very important aspect of how we see things. See, normally what happens is that uh, we see things because your eyes goes from one spot to other casually or intentionally and it moves in a series of small intermediate rapid jumps or tremors and these are called as sackets basically. So your eye will lock on one environment, immediately it will go to another and when it will go to the another one, it will overlap the previous one basically. So it is from one fixation to the other side fixation and it displaces the previous one. And this is so fast, like you say, what is your movies? Movies is basically, uh, you know, you flick around 60 frames in a second. So basically there are images which is moving fast, more than your eyes can scan. So you find it, it is a moving thing, but basically those are images which are moving at 60 frames per second. Same is with your eyes. The movement of uh, eye from one fixation to other is so fast, you feel it like a continuous thing basically. So now you see this image. Now, another thing you have to understand, your eyes look into horizontal vertical direction. See horizontal, it is 180 degree, vertical, it is 130 degree. And in both angles, the horizontal and vertical, two degrees is where your focus is there. Basically you look at in focus. And after that, uh, you know, your focus decreases basically it becomes, it becomes sort of blurry, blurry when it goes to the periphery of the eyes so that fovea thing is very important uh, when you look at it so now how does this saccadic movement act basically so if you're seeing things this will be very fast as i told uh, this is a sort of path you will cover So this is a very important aspect of things that we don't see things, our eyes fix from one point to another and then we see a whole picture. Now, the second aspect of visual structure, that is a visual frame is we see and then we perceive. We just don't see, we perceive. You see something you perceive, you start imagining. That is the beauty of human beings. Now, the other important aspect of visual frame is contrast rapidity. Places become interesting, become functionally because of this contrast in affinity. So, what does contrast do? It creates a psychological effect on how you perceive a space. So, for example, if you see these two spaces, same spaces, one is a daylight, one is artificial light. Daylight, it's soft, placid bright sun, the same space at night with some amount of artificial light and uh, a moonlight becomes very dramatic, very warm with a mystic feel. So, this contrast of night creates a drama, whereas the uh, flat light, cloudy light has flattened the drama when you see it in daylight. So, that is what is, you know, contrast and it is an important aspect of not only your lighting but your designing of interiors, your architecture or your paintings, you see contrast, and, you know, creates that uh, feel of uh, euphoria. Now visual structure, as we saw, it is created from visual components. So what are the visual components? So uh, I have listed down a list of these components, like starting from space, line, shape, scale, tone, color, moment, position, rhythm, harmony, balance, theme. Now, these are the components which will take your visual structure to actuality. 
So from design, it will come to actual. So first we see the space. So what is the space? Space is where basically it's man-made natural, where there are artificial structures created as an element, and which has a purpose, like it may be level space, working space, place to entertainment. So it has got a purpose of creating a space. So like this is a space, uh, the light and sound show, that different elements created. That was daylight, this is artificial light. So this is again a space where lighting creates the depth and scale. And this is a, another space. So if you see, this was a flat lighting, flat space. This was a deep space and this is called, what I call as ambiguous space. And this is created just by lighting. So just by lighting, you know, you can have these three sorts of spaces. Line. Now line is important of our design. Actually, before line, it starts from dot. So when you extend the dots, you create a line. So line is very important of your design. Uh, uh, the You plan for your scheme of things to come. So here you see a line which is along the pathway. Here you see a vertical line going on. Here the line will take a different turn. It is a bit of straight, it is a bit of curve, it is changing directions. Shape. So when you see a line and when the line starts to follow something, you create a shape basically. So here you see the beauty of lighting. So here what is happening is that uh, the same walls, same amount of light. But what is happening? Just because of the tree, you get a shape. The shape is because the, because of the backlit of the tree basically. And it creates that drama in all the silence of the space around it. Similarly here, the space, you see a patch of light which is reflected. So same light, but just because of some added element, it creates a shape basically. Scale. Scale is very important because we, a person sees and perceives because of the, I mean, you, how you perceive distance, it starts from the thing which is in front of you till the thing which is far in from you and how you see the objects, the near ones and the ones which are far off and then you connect it basically and that's how you, you have a notion of distance basically. So here very subtly you create that scale which is horizontal, it gets vertical, it creates a shape of those things and then again it flows basically and here it is basically very sharp here it is again diffuse so this creates basically the premise in totality it gives it scale depth tone but tone is about basically how you want the thing to reflect back the brightness level how you want it you want to subtle it you want to subdue it or you want to brighten it basically. Here we have reversed the tone from the earlier one. Colors, that is a hue. Now colors, you have to be very careful when you use it and where you use it basically. Now, this is basically a theme where you know, uh, it was the premise was based on those uh, fantasy elements like the Harry Potter movies. So we had added an element of color view, which complemented with the warm. The first thing was that, but when adding color, you have to see that there are some elements which will complement it. So you see, we had those elements which were there and we planned as for that. Secondly, your functionality should not be compromised. So if you see this is pathway, and other aspects, they were fully lit to the levels which are required, not too bright also, not too low also. So that functional aspect should be there. And then your design should come out. This was another resort we wanted to create a feel of basically a, a winter, a 
little winter feel. So we just mixed colors again, not to go overboard. So again, we had to remain very uh, careful by planning lighting so that it should not be too much on your face. Then what will happen is that people will not like it basically. So lighting is very important aspect. How do you do it? It has to be timeless. So that was cool color. This was warm basically. So this was like a party thing basically. So you know we had to create an atmosphere of energy and vibrancy. Movement. Now this is a very important aspect of a design. See what happens when you do a design. People are going to move. People are going to stand. They are going to move their necks up, left, right. So movement is very important. So you have to you know like when I do a design, how are going to people look? People look around and how they are going to view these things. So when we did this, this was very uh, sculpture, a tall one, part of the building, and we want to create a you know that thing like a mysticness when people approach it they should be curious and that thing should take them towards the sculpture and when they see the and then at the end i wanted them to see the full thing so the curiosity takes them towards the sculpture and then you see the full thing so if you see the colors were contrasted with the surrounding colors so that your sculpture stands out and it is again so lit that basically uh, see here, what is important is the artwork, the school artwork. It is basically the main element. Lighting is only getting it to life, basically. It should not be overpowering. Position. As there was movement, there is a position from where somebody can see it. So, when you do, like this was again a, a residential project. So, we had to be, uh, you know, careful, like, about the residences, their height from where they'll see the people around it. And it should be not only comfortable, that is the basic premises, but then it should be entertaining to the eye. So when somebody comes into their galleries or somebody sings their windows, they should love that scene. Again, they should get recharged for a few seconds and again they should, uh, uh, they can go back. So the position from where someone sees your design is very important. Now, this is a high storied thing and this was the clubhouse. So this lighting not only serves the purpose of people who are in the clubhouse, but again for the people who are in this uh, 10 to 12 stories building. So this becomes their nighttime visual entertainment. So again, position is important in a small space like this also. Here there's an element, uh, main, you can see the main uh, character of this space. So this is highlighted in a such way and then it is balanced with a subtle lighting and uh, mysticness. So again, how you are seeing it is important and what you are going to see. And the framing is also important. If you see this is left to right viewing basically. I wanted the audience to have it basically. Now again in position one thing is important. I you seeing this same thing. Now this is the same distance. Now what happens is that uh, this is our uh, visual uh, thing, like how you see things. That if you are seeing something and you place an obstacle in the middle of this thing, your cues of distance get lost. So you don't know what is the distance of this thing. So in lighting, this thing is very important, how you create that. Thing. So creating lighting cues is very important. And secondly, there should not be obstacle. It should be very clear. I mean, the, the angle and the... Uh, path of uh, seeing your design should be clear without any obstacle. Now rhythm. This is a very important aspect of design. So start with the first one is rhythm. Rhythm is basically, it's basically inter-related elements which come in continuous parts. And maybe those parts will be of this different themes or different uh, elements. But your design has got this symmetrical elements which contains the overflow so this adds not only that flow but this is like energy which is channelizing it second part of design is harmony the harmony is basically there are different elements of design like colors the angles the elements of uh, landscape hardscape but how they complement each other and as a one space 
how they uplift that experience. So if you see, there are different types of lights in terms of the colors, the angles, their heights, their positions, and there are different elements of the landscape. But everything balances and creates an uplifting experience. Now balance. Now in design, there are two types of balance. One is the symmetrical balance. Now this is an example of symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance is basically, uh, it is not that dynamic. It is, uh, you can say, very soft and it is, you know, plastic basically. So this is a very good example of a symmetrical balance, which is again a mystic. Now here, the balance of lighting is symmetrical, but the structure is not symmetrical. So again, you have to understand. What I mean is by symmetrical balance, your lighting should be symmetrical. Maybe the structure is not that symmetrical. Asymmetrical balance. Now, asymmetrical balance is very dynamic. It creates dynamism in your design basically. And it's like a contrast basically. So affinity is for symmetrical balance and contrast is for asymmetrical balance. Theme. Now we have looked at all the aspects. The very important aspect of design is theme. There should be some theme which binds all the elements. Otherwise, you know, it, it will not relate to each other. Otherwise, it will be just visual elements. As the one theme, it should bind your space when I'm talking about lighting. Now, this example I'm taking. Now, here, there was this one lighting theme of heat starting from a warmer temperature to the cold temperature, which binded the space. And then it had its own uh, different elements. Now we come to story structures. Now in this story structure, as they say, there is an exposition, that is a start, there is a transit, that is a midway. And third thing is the conclusion basically. How do we conclude it? So in a space, when I do a design, first the exposition is the first hand experience of viewer is going to get. How is my first hand experience? Like the first space where the, the viewer will start his journey. So I want it to be placid, soft, gentle. So this is again a uh, township which we did. So the introduction was very basically to create the interest to like what is inside. And the same thing, it had to be very placid. The transit. Now, once you go inside, you're going to move around basically. And that is called as a transit thing. So I want to create a mystic experience in this. So the same space when I enter, if you see, first of all, you create scale, you create some elements of drama and it's very subtly done. And so it becomes a very mystic thing. Like then what happens? People love to explore this thing. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, like any distance, but if you do this sort of lighting, People don't get tired while covering the space because mentally you are always into an experience, one experience after other, and then you don't know how much distance you are covered. So lighting is again a very important aspect of the journey. Basically. Third is the conclusion. Now I had to conclude, and this is a space I had to conclude. So this element had its most dramatic things planned here. So this is what you know you start, then you have a transit, and then you conclude with a dramatic thing where people are going to settle. Now coming to emotion, as I said, this is a very important aspect of uh, lighting design, like how I create emotion or how I connect with it. See, you will be only successful with the, your viewer if you can drive emotions from them. So what are the emotions? Uh, as per the Navarasa theory, there are nine moods basically, there are bhav. And so what is it? So, uh, emotion is basically an indefinable state of mind or feelings that can arouse the audience, the viewer. And this is uh, created due to the nine rasas and a particular effect, a certain tone of color, sound, light visual. This aids to create that effect and this creates that mood basically. So, even if there is certain color, you will get a certain feel of it. And that is a mood basically. You see a certain visual that will create a certain uh, effect on your mind. So those are the moves. 
Now, if you see the uh, now rasa theory, there are rasa, there is a sentiment, there is a bhav, and there is a state of mind. So, if you say like in a space, I am creating a rasa of adbhuta. So, what is the sentiment? The sentiment is wonderment. What is the bhav? That is asharya. And what is my state of mind or the viewer? That is amazement. So, when you go on your design journey, you should be able to know like how this is going to go ahead. What is the rasas that I am going to you know put into this, and what is the people? What are the people going to feel into it? Because whatever you do in any art form design, actually it boils to this nine rasas basically, and there are you know finer elements of it. Like say when I say. Uh, rasa called bhayankar it is not a fear but there are fine threads to it the fine nuance to it which you can implement in your design so what are the just we can say different moves a mood like spiritual which can go to basically a design of like a temple a cozy like a cafe romantic which can go to resorts mystic this can go to resort cafes Joyous, this can go to residences. Bewilder, this goes to uh, your uh, amusement parks. Basically, this works very fine over there. Calmness, again, this goes well in residences, resorts. Now, like for example, how we did it? Like this was one space. This was actually in a stone quarry. This was a residence, and we had this lot of actual stone elements, and there were maximum trees. So we created a nuance of a mood of haunting, basically. So this is where the uh, residents, the people who stayed there, partied everything, and this was surrounded by this huge rock element and the trees. So you know, I had this thing of you know creating that mood, a subtlety of rasa called as haunting, enchanting. Now the space, as, a, as we earlier seen, you know, this was inspired by those fantasy movies, and we wanted to create an enchanting feel where somebody has never experienced such things. So, as I said, keep, you try to do something which is not seen or not felt by anybody before. Now, this is a clubhouse. This is a uh, again based on experience of magical, like what I call. This was a simple clubhouse, but you know when somebody approached it, it had to again a never seen, never felt before experience. If you see, and again you have to be very balanced. Like the warmth is on starting from the ground level. Because it's earth, and you know, the blueness goes into the sky. So that is all. It, it should not. There is a thing called a suspension of belief. So you have to work on that principle. So how much you can stretch it. A sure little thing. People don't know like what it is or is it that thing. So you know this was again a very uh, favorite of mine, which is again a private temple premises, and we yeah, wanted to create an experience of sure because meditate meditating. Is, you know the main thing is what people look for. These are some of our publications in this awards. Thank you.